not just Burgundy Freaks, but Jura Freaks. Welcome back to the cellar of grapes, wine bar in Munich. Uh, my uh, home away from home, I'm Justin Leone, here together with Guillaume d'Angerville, not only from the legendary Marquis d'Angerville, but also from something really cool and quite new, kind of new, not really new, That's 10 years new. old, <laughs> Domaine de Pelican in uh, the Jura. So, Guillaume, um, visionary thought definitely goes through the generations. We said with your grandfather in Domaine bottling, and now with you leaving your perfectly comfortable home <laughs> to venture out into a completely different place where no one has ever done that before, trying to be accepted by a very sort of, I guess, traditional society there in the Jura. Um, I mean, one time someone made a joke when I invited a Volney winemaker to the Cote de he said, oh, sorry, I forgot my uh, passport at home. <laughs> so, so, for, so if you don't even cross that border, you're going all the way to the Jura, which is crazy. But I guess, you know, you have to sort of find your own way in a, in a, in a, in a, in a society that's basically just considered producing something like sherry, Vangean with this crazy Sauvignon grape. And then you come in and you make such an amazingly almost Burgundian style, which is so elegant and beautiful in, in this crazy terroir. But I, what's it like being living in two worlds of Chardonnay? Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, like you say, it's about 10 years old, but I started thinking about Jura 15 years ago, in 2007. It took me literally five years to find the right terroirs to purchase to start this uh, Domaine du Pelican venture. And uh, what I wanted to do was really, and you know, it's, I, I will admit to you, it's, it's also a little bit of an ego thing, you know, when, when I had such a, bit, a larger than life grandfather and father, in fact, both of them very well known in Burgundy, you know, big shoes to fill for me, and the idea that I could prove that I could do something that would be entirely my own, not something that I had inherited, was a, an objective that I had. Uh, I will admit that, you know, I think it's quite human, in fact. Uh, but I wanted to do something which was close enough to Burgundy that I could really supervise it and say that it's my wine, sign off on it without lying. And it had to be different enough from Burgundy that it would be a challenge outside of my comfort zone. And Jura really... You know, I could tick those boxes easily. Very close, one hour to drive from Volnay, and very different. Five grapes, uh, you know, blends uh, allowed, oxidative wines, sparkling wines, skin contact wines. I've tried everything there, you know. Uh, in the space of 10 years, uh, I've, I've gone through all those different cuvées already. And uh, I love it for that reason, you know. And by the, you were talking about this region, which was... Uh, um, I, I, I call it authentic. It's a very authentic region. Beautiful guys, beautiful characters. They make great wines. They have wonderful terroirs. Uh, but it's a tiny region, 2,000 hectares, like the equivalent of like three villages of Burgundy. Wow. Very small. And most of the wines there, uh, produced there, are also consumed there. So the world gets to see nothing. Uh, I, I, so I, I had the exact opposite view. I wanted to show those wines to the world. And of course, using my, my friends, my distributor friends, including Kate and Con, through which I'm here with you today, um, you know, we've, we've gone around the world with those wines. And of course, the response was great because um, it's new to them. It's not new to Jura. You know, we, Jura has made wines for generations. But it's new to the world. It's a new trend, but it's not a trend to me. It's just showing the world something that has existed for generations. And um, wonderful Chardonnays, you know, great terroirs, lovely uh, people. Are there challenges unique to the Jura that you do not have in Burgundy when making these wines? If I had to pick one, it would be rainfall. Mm. It rains twice as much there as it oh. rains in Burgundy. Okay. So it makes you know, treatments, it makes everything challenging because you have very short windows through which you can actually go in the vineyard. Okay. Not, not too wet, not too dry. Boom, you have to... Um, but to. unique terroir, unique nose, unique character. I mean, you, you can certainly see the thread between Chardonnay in the two regions, but that's where it stops. This is a very, very unique thing. Yeah. It must be so exciting to see these two things at one time under one house, uh, under one roof. Uh, this is uh, this is stunning. 
Beautiful. So I, I gotta say, I, I don't always uh, subscribe to every trend that comes along. However, I have to admit that uh, whoever um, started really being a fan of these wines, uh, like you 15 years ago, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> these are incredibly you know, exciting. I like wines that give me emotion. Uh, and Jura wines give me emotion. That's why I made that jump. Well, it was definitely a, a, a great decision. Thank you so much for doing it. Fantastic wines. Cheers, Cheers sir. Thank you for inviting me. No, thank you for Kate and Khan for having us. Thank you for bringing this guy out from little old Burgundy to little old Munich and uh, for sharing these things. And I hope everyone here is a little bit more interested in exploring Volnay and exploring the wonderful world of Arbois and the Jura, not only in white, but in red, too. We don't have time to taste this today, but super cool stuff. Very, uh, I mean, lots of natural wine making, beautifully healthy wines, good for you. Drink them, makes your life better. Thank you, Kate and Khan. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Justin. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>